then some slides on partial volume effect. So um, suppose that we have, um, we do an experiment, we have a gamma camera and we uh, prepare some uh, petri dishes where we put in a little bit of fluid and uh, a constant tracer concentration. So ideally, we would acquire images like this, where this is the size of the disk and the concentration in the disk is constant. Now, if you put that on a gamma camera with a collimator and we do an acquisition, then the gamma camera will determine the X and Y and the energy of all the photons itself. And the gamma camera is obviously connected to front-end electronics and that is connected to the computer. And that signal needs to be discretized because it needs to end up in a discrete image. And in a gamma camera, the user can typically tell the size of the pixels that they want to use. So, okay, we give a pixel size to the gamma camera and basically the gamma camera will then uh, try to assign each photon to one of these pixels. So it has the problem that these disks, of course, don't interfere perfectly with those pixels and the best it can do is put, is this, put the photons in the pixel uh, that they overlap with. And that implies, of course, that if you use big pixels, we get a significant loss of resolution, which you can easily see here. So here for the big uh, uh, disk, the problem is small because in the center of the disk, everything is just fine. But near the edge of the disk, of course, we have uh, a smooth edge, which in reality should have been a very sharp edge. But for the small disks, the, the problem is much stronger. And actually, we, we cannot see the, the true concentration anymore. So these two disks produce exactly the same uh, response, except for a scale. And we don't know if that scale is caused by this object being larger or having more radioactivity. And so if we draw a profile, uh, we get the red line, which is the measured line, and the black line is what is the, th the ground truth. And you see that for the big disk, the problem is small, but for the large disk, the problem is very big and we don't see the concentration anymore. So this is called partial volume effect. And the reason is that um, the pixel is large compared to what we want to see. And the signal doesn't fill up the complete pixel. It fills part of the pixel and the other part of the pixel is filled with something else. But we cannot see that anymore. That is just combined in a single pixel. And if the contributions to the same pixel come from sources that have different intensity, then that creates, uh, we, we get an average, which is not what we want to see. That is the, that's why they call it partial volume. Okay, so we say, if that is a problem, well, we need simply to tell the gamma camera we're using smaller pixels. We can choose them pretty freely. So let's assume we did that <coughs> and we tell the gamma camera that we want to use very small pixels, but then still we will get a blurred image and the reason is the intrinsic resolution. So the gamma camera uh, will see a, a point source as a blob with a full without maximum of about four millimeters. And we can consider a disk as a set of point sources and each of these point sources is changed into a block. So basically we have to convolve this with the point spread function with the blob that the gamma camera can see, which will blur the images. So now if you draw a profile, we get a very similar problem as before. The, the dashed lines are now the ground truth and the solid lines is the profile through the measurement. And we get the same problem as before for the small disk. Um, we don't see the true maximum anymore. Again, because of partial volume effects. Now the problem is not the pixel because we made them very small. Now the problem is the point spread function of the gamma camera. So it's a response to a very small object. It, the smallest thing it can see is a blob. And when that blob is large compared to what we want to see, then we can say that the object we want to see does not fill the entire blob. The, the blob gets contributions from uh, neighboring activity and they all get mixed in that same block. And so we can still call it partial volume effect, we do. And the effect is that we don't see the true uh, concentration anymore. Now the, the activity is still there. So if we look at the total activity we have, it's still there, the photons have not gone, they just didn't arrive in the right position. But if we would 
group them all together and put them in here, it, we would nicely get a black spot. They're not lost, they're just distributed. Here, they're distributed too. So some photons don't end up where they should have been. They went to the neighbors, but the neighbors give back just as many photons. So because the thing is, is uniform, you can smooth it as much as you like, it will stay uniform. But of course, not so near the edges. Another way to say the same thing, a small object consists mostly of edge and edges are uh, affected by this blurring. Big object objects consist mostly of uniform object and they are not affected. So if you read papers about this, then they give all kinds of names to this um, phenomenon and the, all the names don't always help actually. So this they call the recovery coefficient which is typically defined as the ratio of the maximum that we can see to the maximum that we should have seen. And typically that is smaller than unity. Now, if you have pretty good recovery like here and noise on top of that, it may actually be large than one because due to noise, the maximum may be a bit higher than the ground truth. And then you get a recovery, which is higher than one. Then you have spillover, which is the activity that went out of that object into the background. And, uh, this suggests that there is no spillover here. Again, that is not true. There is the same spillover here, but you get the same spillover back. Uh, there are also other terms like spill in, which is the, the same thing. But if I would not be interested in that object, but in the background, then I would call it spill in because now it's activity that I didn't want to see that I get from the background. So lots of terms. I think it's good to keep the physics in mind because then you can easily understand all these terms. <coughs> 